Welcome back, gang. Uh, this is the BS Machine. It's going to be a bit of a different uh, episode on this uh, episode 117. Uh, I've been overseas for like four weeks, and some of you might have heard that uh, I've been overseas and I was there for a couple of, well, no, like four weeks, and um, I was in Bangkok and I got a phone call from my beautiful angel Nicola Mm -hmm. in that um, we had some bad news that uh, that landed uh, with our little baby and and I, I was talking to Nick earlier today and I was in two minds of whether to do an episode on our experience of what we went through or not and and I just thought it for whatever reason both me and Nick both both thought that it might be a really nice thing just even for us to to share our story of um of birth and death and I guess a little parts of our relationship and um and just and share our story of of how we've been trying to bring a little bundle of joy into the world and and i'm lucky enough to have nicola on uh my my beautiful partner with me my beautiful fiance she is now (laughs) with me on this uh on on episode 117 at the bs machine and i think i'm just gonna lead the way for us in in this episode and and i'm blessed to have nicola here and i think a lot of you that that are avid bs machine listeners to this podcast have probably heard me talking quite a bit about nick but now you actually get to hear her beautifulness and and get to meet her so nicola lally welcome to the bs machine thank you for the introduction (laughs) (laughs) and we actually we actually got engaged um a day before I left to go overseas. I had this incredible opportunity to go travel overseas for three or four weeks. It was meant to be longer and just be back for the birth of our baby. Um, But obviously I had to come back a little bit earlier because uh, we had some complications with the birth. And uh, (laughs) yeah, I don't don't even know how we're going to get through this without, um, without, you know, losing our shit but we're going to keep each other (laughs) keep each other strong so uh yeah if you're joining us on spotify welcome if you're joining us on the apple podcast app or on youtube where you can even see how beautiful nick is you'll be watching us on youtube uh so nick here we are we are basically in a very raw uh place we're about four or five days post um post the disaster that we went through we had a stillbirth and um we were unfortunate enough to uh the the what we what the baby had was a uh, it's called a fetal maternal hemorrhage and can you explain a little bit about what that is honey i wish i could well just from what you know about it it's when her blood circulated into mine yeah or mine so her, yeah and she basically bled to death uh, in your belly yeah over three days over three days yeah and um and so what happens when when that happens is when the baby's blood and um and nicola's blood the mother's blood combine something happens and the baby's heart ended up stopping and so uh, can you just fill us in on, on how that all happened, how we got to that spot? Go back to the start? Yeah, go back As to the start. Like, well, egg freezing and... Yeah, let's go back to the start. Let's go back to when we, you know, back to the whole beginning when we decided we wanted to start a family. Okay. Yeah, but I had already planned to do egg freezing before I met you. Mm. But we were together when I had my eggs frozen and that was in October. 2021 yeah and that was a rough experience because I didn't check myself for 14 days and that took me three months to get over that experience in what way just my body was just it was the hormones just wrecked my body you're injecting hormones 
lot of hormones into your body to stimulate the eggs. And that took me three months to get over. Then I think we got pregnant in January 2023. No, 2022. No, 22. Yeah. And. Which was planned. We wanted to get pregnant. We're like, yeah. let's start a family. Yeah. Why not? We've been together for six months. <laughs> <laughs> what a better time, eh? <laughs> So we got pregnant in January and then uh, by, I think it was the 21st of April, we had a miscarriage at 12 weeks mm. when our crom- or your, your chromosome definitely was you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not me. They, of course it was me. They yeah. weren't viable. Mm. Um, so she, he died mm. um, at 12 weeks and that was 12, a long 12 weeks of suffering. Yeah. Um, I realized pregnancy was not for me. Yeah. It's been a horrible road. Yeah, you had, like, the with both pregnancies, Nick um, had, a, especially in the first three months, she had a really a terrible, r- terrible, like, terrible yeah. Terrible pregnancy. So that was that. Obviously devastated, and but 12 weeks, you're not, you know, you're not as attached, but it was more the illness I faced for 12 weeks. And then having to go to work and do everything was very, very hard. Mm. Um, and then that was April 21. And then by 1st of July, we were pregnant again mm. with baby Rose. Yay! And I was <laughs> so happy because I... I was so happy too. I really wanted a girl. I was so happy you were having a girl. Yeah. And um, that was another 14 weeks of horrendous illness mm. um to the point like where i had to take a month off work yeah um and so just i know nicola's saying horrendous and i i think some people do have a shit time and this is just a, as a guy talking and seeing his his partner you know go through the first three months of pregnancy but man you know nick was like Bad. bad like throwing up morning like morning sickness was like all day, sickness. <laughs> all day sickness and you know as a guy you sort of sit back and you're like fuck what can i do and i i'm just like what do you what can i i couldn't do anything well maybe you couldn't have went to bali <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and then yeah go to europe and like a week later yeah but anyway um yeah that was not fun and mm. i was very very angry because i was so sick but i was super happy at the same time yeah because i always wanted a girl and i had Mm. my baby rose and so it was all worth it um i remember at 12 weeks calling my doctor and be like you told me the sickness would be over 12 weeks and i was still sick Mm. till about 14 weeks and then i got a little bit of relief Mm. for a few weeks and then come first of december we had sepsis we well we so nick Nick, just so you guys know, I mean, I, I don't, Nick is a, she's a lawyer. And so Nicola is basically one of the strongest women I've ever, ever come across. I mean, she does, she's independent. She does everything herself. She's, she's just an incredible woman. I mean, she's created an incredible amount of, um, what she's done in her life in her 38 years I don't know many people that have done that and she's done it on her own, which is just unbelievable. And, um, you know, it, it, for her to get sick, it's like she'd say, no, 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 I don't have time, I don't have time to be sick. It's true. <laughs> so watching Nick, you know, go, she was literally in bed um, for like three weeks. I'm like, babe, are you fucking going to go to hospital? Like, I'm, She's like, no, 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 it's just the flu, it's just the flu. And then it's like, no, no, no. Or I was like, babe, okay, it might be the flu, but you're literally trembling in bed. Like, let's get you to fucking hospital. Yeah. And then what happens next? And then, well, we end up hospital for f- over a week. Yeah. With sepsis. And me and Rose survived that, even though it took a month of our lives. Mm. And anyone that doesn't know sepsis is blood poisoning and you could die. And the baby could die. Um, so we survived that. And then after that, on the third trimester, I actually started to feel amazing. Like mm. I started actually being able to function. Before that, I literally could barely drink a glass of water. I lost loads of weight. And um, 
yeah I started feeling really really good but I just want to just kind of reverse back to the like the miscarriage after we had the miscarriage I literally like forced Tommy to go and get we got all the checks done we did too that's right about that like I literally did not want to get the next one wrong like I spent so much money got like best care private doctors we got naturopaths we're all taking vitamins everybody was taking all the proper vitamins you got all your sperm checked Mm. and i just was like we're not this i'm not going to do this miscarriage thing again so like throughout the whole pregnancy i got every appointment that i had to do i didn't leave a stone unturned i got every check i yeah i did everything like i just was like this is it i'm not doing this again i'm gonna do it right and i just that's what's so annoying now is like i didn't miss a beat Mm. and then anyway just 38 weeks into the pregnancy i on the tuesday i had a scan with the doctors and and i had a trainee midwife as well with me who's been with me for the past couple of weeks and we went in Tommy was away and everything was amazing everything was fine i actually could see her moving her mouth and she was like Mm. drinking in fluid and everything was good and he said okay i want to see you again next week and i was walking out with blair my midwife and i was like honestly does this guy not know i have a freaking law firm to run like i can't be going back in and every freaking week like doesn't it everything's fine and she's like no no no, you gotta come back and i'm like seriously it's like you don't understand takes up so much of my time um and anyway she's like no no you gotta book back in i was like okay okay this was tuesday and then on uh, Friday I started like feeling like lightness in my back and my feet weren't swollen anymore and I was I didn't feel a kick that day Sorry. and then Saturday um I had a foot I had a friend come over and we put the pram together and I was talking to my chiropractor who's also one of my best friends and I was like calling her asking her what am I supposed to pack in my hospital bag because I'm like all right we're 38 weeks now I better get my act together and um she was like laughing at me so I just looked it up on YouTube anyway so I packed all my bags so I washed all Rose's clothes what did you look up on YouTube how to pack a hospital bag. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually frightening. <laughs> you you YouTube how to look for pack a hospital bag? For the baby. Oh, that's awesome. And, and by the way, I was gallivanting around the world at this point. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But the weird thing was that morning I woke up and Tommy didn't have his phone with him overseas. Mm. And I sent this wet message to Tommy. And I didn't, the place where I was in, I didn't have... A, um, I didn't have access to my phone or anything. It was just that type of place. And even though Nick knew that... Um, you were never going to get it. I was I never going to get that message. needed to get it out. Um, she sent me a message and I'm going to read you this message. And I didn't get this till after I got home. Knowing that you would never get it. And Nick knew that I, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you this message. And it's like, this is how, like, full mother's instinct. So Nick writes me this message knowing that I'd never get it. My Tommy, 38 weeks pregnant now. As much as I want to hold on for you to come, I'm also eager to have her because every day her movements slow down and it's quite scary not to feel her moving. I start to panic, panic and fret a lot and get myself into a tissy. Although it's not uncommon for her movements to slow down because she has less space, however, it's very stressful to experience it. So I'm battling two feelings. The feeling, sorry, so I'm battling two feelings. The feeling of needing and wanting your home for a birth because it's such an unbelievable, terrifying experience. I need you to hold my hand through it and hold the space. But conversely, wanting her to come out so I know she's healthy and okay. It's a stressful time in my mind right now, love heart. And 
that was the that was during the day that was during the day before Nick even knew. never really caught anything yeah um, and then that I had Pat and Steve here some his friends and they were your friends too <laughs> yeah and they had just told me that day they put me on their emergency contact mm. so I could call them in the middle, of the, in the middle of the night if I needed to go to hospital because they said you'd probably drive yourself <laughs> which is probably <laughs> true <laughs> I probably would which I did and mm. um, they were like make sure you call me um, and then I just then when they left kind of noticed actually she hasn't kicked today and then I had this doubler that my friend gave me a doubler is the heart monitor yeah and I just laid on the couch and I was like searching for like an hour going, where the hell's her heartbeat? Like, what the hell is going on? And then I went outside for a walk and I started running, jumping up and down, like move, move. And I came back to use the doubler again and no heartbeat. No heartbeat. Mm. So I, I was lying in bed and it was like 9.30 and I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to go to the hospital and I'm just going to make sure, because surely 38 weeks, like, I was there Tuesday. It's fine. Anyway, so at nine thirty, I drove myself to the hospital, and like I literally didn't even listen to the radio. I was just frozen solid, like kind of in shock, because that doubler always worked. So I knew where her heartbeat was. So I went in, and they just kept me outside waiting for a minute, and they kind of like, oh, this one, like, you know, kind of, oh, she's probably overreacting. And I was really hoping that I was overreacting, and. um then I went in and she put the monitor on me and her face just went fro like a pale ghost oh. and I just knew. And I just couldn't even I just started shaking. I couldn't even I was just in so much shock. And then she called the doctor, who's my doctor who's happened to be in the hospital the same day, Dr. Sush from Melbourne Mothers. <laughs> and yeah, and he was just came in and said nothing. And I'm like, please say something. Please say something. It was like, felt like an hour before he said anything, probably something a couple of minutes. I was just sitting there shaking, even starting to shake now. And that was it. They said, no heartbeat. Mm. And he just wasn't saying anything. And I'm like, well, what now? Like, what? You just take her out and everything's going to be fine. Like, what now? And that I just, I called Kat and Steve and just couldn't even breathe. I couldn't even speak to them. And then they had to come pick me up because I, I was like, I'll drive home, it's okay. And the doctor would not let me drive home. No way, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and then this is at 10.30, I had to call Tommy to come home. Yeah, so I was in Bangkok and I, that was definitely, I was expecting a phone call, like, babe, I'm in labor, come home. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, obviously I, I got a phone call from Nick. I, I was with someone and they bought the phone to my hotel room and said, you've got to call Nick right now, and which I did. And I called and I just knew what was going on. And basically that was at eight o'clock on a last store on a Saturday, Saturday night. night. And uh, by midnight I was on a flight home and then, yeah, I landed, got home. And we already had a bunch of people at the house that were supporting yeah. and loving the absolute <laughs> fuck out of Nick. Yeah. And I just walked in and me and Nick just like fell it fell into each other, didn't we? It was oh so painful. And when we fell into each other it was basically the next port of call was just alright, let's get to hospital, you know, and what's the what's the what's the next what's steps? Next? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everyone was here clear, clearing out the nursery. Because mm, with the whole house was full of baby clothes and baby, 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 baby. baby, baby yeah, it's all about the baby yeah. for months. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he was at the hospital, and I actually had to birth her. Yeah. So, Nick, um, you know, I mean, I thought she was a powerful woman before going through this, but now there's superwoman and then there's nick <laughs> who superwoman would learn shit from and like what i saw nick i mean you know you guys listening if you can just imagine going into a birth which in itself is the, you know traumatic. traumatic but knowing that you're going to be birthing a, a child that has no life in it i mean 
Oh, fuck me, man. Like what? And uh, luckily I was, I was there and I got to experience this whole thing with Nick. And even the, the process of birth, I mean, at this, when we first got to the hospital, me and Nick were both just saying, you know what? Just, I was like, babe, you, you, what do you think? And Nick was like, you know what? Just put me to sleep and wake me up when the baby's out. And then... Well, what happened was, I, but I didn't know. Mm. I mean, we went to hospital and then we had nurses and midwives who were amazing come in and say, okay, well, this is the funeral. This is this. I'm like, the baby hasn't even come out of me. You're talking to me about a funeral? Mm. Like, I don't understand my brain just was like in shock like I didn't but I knew I had to do what I had to do and my doctor came in and he said you need to have a vaginal birth not a c-section because having a c-section is going to add salt to the wound you know because you've got a lot lot longer recovery after and I was like okay that's fine I'll have a vaginal birth but then they gave me the tablet the night before and then they thought when they came in at 9 a.m. that I would have... No, not the tablet. They put the, like a gel. a gel into the cervix to try and dilate um, the cervix. Yeah, like and induce me. Induce Nick. And it just... The gel just wasn't working. It wasn't working. No. And then they came in at 9, wasn't working. They came back. They gave me stronger gel. Mm. They came back in at 3 and I was not dilated in any way. So I was like, okay, this has been the longest day of my life. We have been up since for two days. I need to... Like, I need this to be over mm. because I'm just sitting here with a dead baby inside me. Mm. And, um, okay, and he, you know, he was definitely, and I understand now why, mm. forcing me to just wait it out. And I'm like, it's like torturing a small, a small animal. I'm like, I just can't, that's what you're doing, you're just torturing me. And, um, what happened? Then, so I booked in for a C section at 7 p.m. And they, so we're two booked in, people came, so there was two emergency C-sections. Yeah, so they booked us in for seven and then there was, the, just when they were about to take her in, there was two emergency C-sections that they put before Nick. Um, so we were due to go in at like 10, 10, o'clock, 10 o'clock and literally at quarter to 10, My waters broke. Nick's waters break and we're just like, oh, the yeah. Fuck, I'm gonna do now, you know. And then my contraction started two minutes apart. No joke, guys. The her water breaks, and within thirty seconds, her contractions were like two minutes apart. So it just went from nothing to oh. just like whoa. And then ten seconds apart. A ten, so yeah, and it was just all going on. So they still brought me in for a C-section. They still took her in for C-section. But as she was, and by the way, this is something, I don't know if you remember or even know, but when they took her in for C-section, they were, and they were going to obviously first give her the epidural, uh, the epidural so she doesn't feel pain or whatever. Just wanted to feel nothing. Yeah, just wanted to feel nothing, obviously. (laughs) Um, And me and the midwife, Blair, they didn't let us into the operating theatre while she was getting the, the epidural. And me and Blair were sitting outside the the operating theatre, just outside it. And there, you know, all I could hear is Nick going, Aah! like screaming. I'm going, dude, the fuck are you guys doing in there? You're killing her. I was bawling my eyes. So me and Blair took it in turns of breaking down. Like I was crying my eyes out, listening to Nick yelling. And then, then I'd stop and then Blair would start bawling her eyes. And I'd be like, it's all right. And all I wanted to do was run in there, kill everyone and just steal. And what, not give me the epidural no, and maybe die? No, I wanted to take the pain away from you. Because I didn't, I thought that the, the you were screaming when they were trying to put the epidural I in. I couldn't because I was shaking too much. But you were, sh- in, you were screaming pain. because of the pain. The, the pain. The contractions. Uh, the contractions, it yeah. So much. And then, so in the, the... Uh, uh, operating theatre what happens then well they opened me up and and then I was already nine centimetres dilated yeah so he was like "Mm, please don't go through the c-section and Mm. I was like I was already the pain had gone like they'd numb my legs for c-section and they give me the epidural so I was like okay I can it's okay so they wheel me back into the room Mm. and then I laboured tried to push her out for until about 3.30 3.30am yeah. and then I was like I'm done you're exhausted I was seriously and, done and Nick was 
you know, pushing and just I was right there next to her holding her hand. Oh God, kissing and her. And this was when, and then everyone was getting very emotional in the room. Because, oh, all I the mean, nurses, the doctors, everyone, everyone in the room. Everyone left. <laughs> yeah, stage. people took it in turns leaving because everyone was so emotional and, yep. you know, and it was just going through something like that was just... Oh, and, and being there, like, I guess from my side, you know, like seeing Nick, oh, just, (laughs) it's just horrendous, you know, when you love someone so much and you, you just want to take the pain away from them, but you just feel helpless. But at the same point, you've got your bloody fiance lying on that bed and you know one of the most I guess things for me and I know Nick as well was that like even when the head came out like you were what what are they crowning or whatever they call it um I wanted so much (laughs) to (laughs) to be like this is all a mistake. Yeah, I know. We're and and I just wanted to hear a fucking, just a weep or a cry, you know. I know. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, and then, you know, but even, so did, what do you want to add? Uh, just you doing Reiki on me during the day. I was like, what <laughs> yeah. the fuck are you doing? And you're like, Reiki. I'm like, <laughs> I was doing Reiki on Nick's belly and in my... Through my hands, I'm going, all right, all the gods, all the universe, all the fucking things that ever lived and will ever live, just give me the power to restart this little bubby's heart. And I tried everything and (laughs) (laughs) my my Reiki wasn't working then, that's for sure. Um, And so... They had to pull her out with forceps. Yeah, so they had, they pulled her out with, yep, go. Well, I mean, I just... Was give I just gave up I was so yeah. tired emotional dead inside and then she came out yeah and she was so perfect <laughs> she was perfect and I don't even know if you remember this Nick but um and this is probably the most disheartening memory for me is when um when the baby came out Rose. you look <laughs> Rose yeah when Rose came out Nick looked at me and do you remember you said, is she alive? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, you looked at me and you went, is she alive? I said, no, honey, <laughs> she's not. And that, that I think was for me fucking horrendous, my God. And then just naturally, Mick, um, you know, pulled up the baby to her, you know, to her chest and just organically... Yeah. Seeing that connection between mother and child, like fuck me, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So throughout the pregnancy, I'm like, this is it. I'm not ever going through this again. Like, this one, and I've only ever wanted one child anyway. Mm. I'm like, I am um, never going through this again. But then, everyone who had kids were like, mm, you say that, and then you have the kid and you forget. And I'm mm. like, then I have the kid and I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, and so. So but we, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah, that was, it was awful. Mm. Terrible, worst experience. And I don't even know what to make of it now. Yeah. Like, I don't know what lesson I was supposed to learn because I was already super blessed that we didn't have to do, you know, it was relatively easy for us mm. to get pregnant. So I don't really know what lesson. I already felt blessed and I already felt ready to be a mother and everything was prepared. And the house was prepared, I was prepared, you were prepared. We're all excited about mm. the next chapter. And then we were just totally robbed. Yeah. And I don't know really the reason why. Mm. And I, yeah, I, yeah, I just wanted to go with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the time. Mm. And then... They were said you can take her home for two days, mm. and initially we were talking like, "What the hell, taking her home to the house?" I like, know that's just too close to home, but thankfully they encouraged us to. And after we met her, we we took her home for two nights, which was really nice. Mm. And we got to bathe there, and I got to dress her in her Burberry outfit. <laughs> yeah, <it did. laughs> and 
Tommy got to be there, and if she wasn't dead already, she would have died from Tommy birthing her. That's seriously. That's dark. It's true. <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> it's true. Work on your bed. Skills, but uh, it was so nice and we brought her back and then all my friends and your friends came over to meet her and everyone was very like hesitant at the start mm. but then they saw that she just looked like she was sleeping yeah she was so cute yeah 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 and then and then we had to drop her home you know drop her back to the hospital yeah so what we've um what we've decided to do is uh, little Rose is getting cremated and um, one of my best buddies, he uh, started a company called Living Legacy, um, which is basically you turn the ashes into a tree. You turn and it, it just it's just reproduction of life. So we're yeah, working with Living Legacy to give her a nice little home in the a rose bush. A rose bush or a tree or something we haven't decided yet, but she's rose is going back into the earth and she's going to be reborn as a tree or something <laughs> or a rose bush. And uh, and I mean, look, it is. I, th- I think when you're going through something like this, there is. I mean, I think looking for reasons or looking for all that type of stuff. I don't know if that's the right answer or not, but. One thing that I've definitely noticed through this process is that um, the amount of love that we have received and the amount of uh, support that we've seen and the amount of togetherness and I'm talking all of these, this is not just love, support and together. This is like unconditional crazy ass love unconditional crazy ass support um i I never even knew this level of support and love and togetherness even existed so if rose has done one thing already in a short little life she's created these incredible bonds and you know even with me and you honey like we've just like super glue like come come together Mm -hmm. and i know that people say that trauma can make or break make or break but i think we're lucky in that we've literally just glued (laughs) together like if nick is away from me for more than 30 seconds actually i'm like babe where are you (laughs) come back so it's been a it's been a really fucked up tragic um experience and i know that there's other people out there that have experienced similar things worse not as bad i mean it's not a competition but one thing i can say is that um you know when you hear of people going through some fucked up stuff like what me and nick and everyone around us has just gone through um it's like being in it all I can say for me is that you still don't know how to be or act. Sometimes I'm like, fuck, am I not sad enough? Or, <laughs> you know, like, am I meant to be in a corner in fetal pose and and be, and is my whole life meant to turn upside down? Or am I, am I doing this right? You know, I mean, how do you feel being in it? I don't have them. I have, I'm flooded with thoughts. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to be. Mm. I feel robbed. Mm. And I feel like I don't know what lesson I was supposed to learn. I, I think it's because uh, everything, every time you do something, you're supposed to learn something or a lesson. But I don't understand this one. And I wasn't like I was cavalier when I was pregnant. I was super grateful and I was blessed and I did all, thought I did all the right things. So I, I just don't. I don't know. And I'm terrified of terrified of what the next future brings mm. like how do you be i don't know if i'll ever be happy again or how if i can get pregnant again or if i try to get pregnant again or how and i just don't want to be defined by it mm. and the next time we're pregnant like it would be like walking on eggshells like yeah. that that's like that's a scary part that's isn't a it scary part. yeah like, like thinking that in the next pregnancy that you'll be 
like just living in anxiety for the whole fucking thing. Because it's not Rose back. Yeah. Mm, I keep saying to Tommy, please go pick her up from the hospital every day. Can we get her back? <laughs> I didn't even want him to take her to the yeah. hospital. I was like, no, leave her here. Mm. It's like, he can't <laughs> take yeah. her forever. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Where, I don't know what the, I don't know. I don't know the way forward. Mm. I don't know. I don't think you meant to know, Bubba. I like to know things. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, I don't know how to be either. That's the problem. Mm. And they say grief is in stages. But I haven't landed anywhere yet. No, no. It's and you know, I mean, still, me and Nick are still both very raw. And just something else I, I just thought of. I mean, you know, we're being raw, but, you know, I didn't realise that, you know, even our best mates like Steve and Kat, they were actually looking forward to becoming auntie yeah. and uncle you yeah. know um your mom. my mum was looking mom. forward to becoming a grandpa your parents were they're coming out from ireland um in the next couple of days and they were hoping to come out here and nurse a beautiful a baby. <laughs> little baby um but they're basically just gonna well they, it'll still be great to have them here and whatnot but you know um they'll be here to to just being more family and whatnot but you know for me I, I think the reason I wanted to put this out is because one like I think it was quite nice for us to talk about this together yeah given I'm someone that never talks about emotions you never talk about emotions but you did well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah closed door policy <laughs> yeah well not today honey no not for this um and you know whatever whatever i mean i think when you when you go through something like this you feel a little bit lonely maybe like am i the only one that went through it like this is it so you just don't know it and and having uh this experience with with nick for me it, it obviously brought up a lot of things for me, but one of the things that I really uh, celebrate Nick for is that in this experience, I have seen nothing but one Nick be in her power, but in her power in a sense where she's actually embracing vulnerability. No, you are. I know, but you does are. It suit me? <laughs> uh, uh, whether it suits you or not, I think it suits you beautifully. But Nick is like full embracing vulnerability, and that is, I think, in situations like this, whether they're this traumatic, more traumatic, or not as traumatic, vulnerability and 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 being in it in a vulnerable sense and allowing yourself to feel the things and experience it I just think there's no other way what do you think I don't have any words I don't I don't I don't know anything anymore mm. I don't know what happened I don't know how to feel I don't know how to be I don't know how to move on I don't know how to move forward mm. but you have to move yeah. forward like I'm already back to work <laughs> you are yeah like, everything keeps me, the, the world keeps going Mm. so sad but I feel blessed that I also have work to distract me because mm. sitting at home I cry myself to sleep I cry when I wake up mm-hmm. and the only time I keep it together is when I'm at the office because I have to yeah so Nick needs work if there's anyone out there that needs a lawyer <laughs> I don't need work I'm sure, okay. <laughs> yeah but uh, I mean yeah so I guess that's it guys I mean, do you have anything else to add honey like if there's anyone listening that no. But might we have gone through a similar thing or we helped we went to the medium and they helped us yeah they helped it but i'm like if there's anyone listening to this episode that may have gone through a similar experience do you i mean what would you say to them i'm in no position i'm i'm still in shock mm. and i'm i'm in no position to give anyone advice about anything right now mm. um yeah i just um, I have landed nowhere, so mm. I, I just can't advise anyone to do anything. Mm. I don't know enough about it. 
I still think she's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's our guardian angel. That's what the medium said, remember? Yeah, she's up there and she she's going to come back again, but later. Nick, Nick was saying in her dark humor, she's like, she'll come back with inflation. <laughs> what did you say? Um, she'll come back when inflation no, it was the day they announced and the, the interest rates gone up again and I said she probably heard that and was like fuck this <laughs> <laughs> I would come back when inflation goes down oh well, we wouldn't blame her <laughs> oh jeez oh guys yeah so anyway thank you for listening through and man listening to me and Nick bear our emotions and share our story uh, obviously, uh, feel free to share this episode with, yeah, I guess anyone that you you believe might need to hear us in pain. <laughs> um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much. And that was an episode of the BS Machine. What number? Uh, that was 117. Yeah, 117. And thank you, Nicola Lally, my love of my life uh for being here with me i love you very much love you too.